we go under both spans of the Bay Bridge and back out to Ever Forward, which might seem forever stuck. The ship ran aground with 5,000 containers on board more than three weeks ago. With how deep they're dug into the mud here, I think everyone kind of expected this to be a long operation. Captain Caitlin Bees with our sister company, the Annapolis School of Seamanship, brought us out as a new plan from the command team was in the works. What was first described by the Coast Guard to Bay Bulletin as very dangerous will now be part of the salvage. Containers will be removed near Gibson Island where the ship is outside of the Craig Hill Channel. Probably removing some of the containers to, to lift the boat off the seabed a little bit is probably the only thing that's going to wedge it out of the mud here. The Coast Guard says dredging to a depth of 43 feet will continue and then beginning Wednesday, April 6th, two crane barges will be installed to start removing containers. Once they're off the ship, tugs and pool barges will attempt another refloat. This follows two unsuccessful attempts with tugboats pushing on the ship last week. There is still so much uncertainty about how and when Ever Forward will ever float again. But one thing we can say is Evergreen declared a general average and it's something very uncommon in the maritime industry. A declaration of general average in this circumstance was expected by many of us, but it is not something that is common. Todd Lochner, an Annapolis-based maritime attorney, says the general average number will now just grow exponentially with the cost of offloading. There is a lien on the cargo, and theoretically, the owners do not of the ship do not have to release that cargo to the consignees, those who are to receive it, until the lien for the general average occurs. He says general average is an old practice. The concept with general average goes all the way back to ancient Greece when in order to solve problems like this you would jettison some of the cargo in order to have the vessel lighter. And that's originally where it comes from. Now it includes all the salvage operations that are being referred to. And the bill for Ever Forward could just keep adding up as the containers return to the Port of Baltimore. Practically, the ship owner doesn't really want to hold on to that cargo because there will be charges that they continue to incur at the destination port as well. Lochner says there are all sorts of legal arguments to negotiate a price. In order to avoid paying general average, the cargo interests at some point will argue that the ship was unseaworthy for some reason. It's been grounded since March 13th with what the Coast Guard calls general cargo. Bay Bulletin will be watching to see if taking weight off the top helps to refloat the 1100 foot ship. For Chesapeake Bay Media's Bay Bulletin, I'm Cheryl Costello.